India is one of the largest tea producers in the world, although over 70% of its tea is consumed within India itself. In this, India is also among the top five per capita tea consumers. A number of renowned teas, such as Assam and Darjeeling, also grow exclusively in India. The Indian tea industry has grown to own many global tea brands and has evolved into one of the most technologically equipped tea industries in the world. Tea production, certification, exportation, and all other facets of the tea trade in India is controlled by the Tea Board of India. The introduction of Chinese tea plants, different from Indian tea, to India is commonly credited to Robert Fortune. Fortune employed many different means to steal tea plants and seedlings, which were regarded as property of the Chinese Empire. He is also known for his use of Nathaniel Bagshaw Ward's portable Wardian cases to sustain the plants. Using these small greenhouses, Fortune introduced 20,000 tea plants and seedlings to the Darjeeling region of India. He also illegally brought a group of trained Chinese tea workers who would facilitate the production of tea leaves. With the exception of a few plants which survived in established Indian gardens, most of the Chinese tea plants Fortune introduced to India perished. The technology and knowledge that was brought over from China, however, may have been instrumental in the later flourishing of the Indian tea industry. From the first, Indian-grown tea proved extremely popular in Britain, both for its greater strength and as a patriotic product of the empire. Tea had been a high-status drink when first introduced, but had steadily fallen in price and increased in popularity among the working class. The temperance movement massively promoted tea drinking, from the early 19thc on, as an alternative to beer, water being of dubious quality, but the complete boiling necessary for tea rendering it safe. Many men, in particular, found China tea insipid, and the greater strength, and lower price, of Indian teas appealed greatly. By the last quarter of the 19th century, big brands such as Lyons, Lipton's and Mazawa tea dominated the market. Tea was the dominant drink for all classes during the Victorian era, working class families often doing without other foods in order to afford it. This meant the potential market for Indian teas was vast. Indian tea soon came to be the norm, with China tea a minority taste. Until the 1970s and the rise of instant coffee, Indian tea had almost dole command of the hot drinks market. Its rivals were cocoa, coffee and savory drinks such as Bovril and Oxo. In the early 1820s, the British East India Company began large-scale production of tea in Assam, India, of a tea variety traditionally brewed by the Singpho people. In 1826, the British East India Company took over the region from the AHOM kings through the Yandabu Treaty. In 1837, the first English tea garden was established at Shibua in Upper Assam. In 1840, the Assam Tea Company began the commercial production of tea in the region, run by indentured servitude of the local inhabitants. This tea was not for export disambiguities needed. Beginning in the 1850s, the tea industry rapidly expanded, consuming vast tracts of land for tea plantations. By the turn of the century, Assam became the leading tea producing region in the world. Modern tea production in India India was the top producer of tea for nearly a century, but recently China has overtaken India as the top tea producer due to increased land availability. Indian tea companies have acquired a number of iconic foreign tea enterprises including British brands Tetley and Taifu. As of 2013 the consumption of green tea in India was growing by over 50% a year. The major tea producing states in India are, Assam, West Bengal, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Tripura, Arunachal Pradesh, Himachal Pradesh, Karnataka, Sikkim, Nagaland, Uttarakhand, Manipur, Mizoram, Meghalaya, Bihar, Orissa. Government and the Indian tea industry The Indian tea industry as a mass employer has enjoyed the attention of the Indian government. When export sales went down, the government has been sympathetic to the demand of the industry and its cultivators. It has passed resolutions supporting the industry domestically and has also lobbied extensively with organizations like the WTO internationally. The Indian administration along with the European Union and six other countries Brazil, Chile, Japan, South Korea and Mexico filed a complaint with the WTO against the Byrd Amendment which was formally known as the Continued Dumping and Subsidy Offset Act of 2000 legislated by the U.S. 
The essence of this act was that non-U.S. firms which sell below cost price in the U.S. could be fined and the money is given to the U.S. companies who made the complaint in the first place. The act adversely affected the commodities business of the complainant states and has since been repealed after WTO ruled the act to be illegal. Furthermore, the Indian government took cognizance of the changed tea and coffee market and set up an inter-ministerial committee IMC, to look into their problems in late 2003. The IMC has recommended that the government share the financial burden of plantation industry on account of welfare measures envisaged for plantation workers mandated under the Plantation Labor Act 1951. Moreover, IMC has recommended to introduce means so that the agricultural income tax levied by the state governments can be slashed and the tea industry be made competitive. It has recommended that sick or bankrupt plantation estates should be provided with analogous level of relaxation for similarly placed enterprises, estates as are available to industries referred to BIFR. A special tea term loan STTL, for the tea sector was announced by the Indian government in 2004. It envisaged restructuring of irregular portions of the outstanding term, working capital loans in the tea sector with repayment over five to seven years and a moratorium of one year, which was to be on a case-to-case -case basis for large growers. The STTL also provides for working capital up to 2 lakh rupees at a rate not exceeding 9% to small growers. In addition to these measures, the Tea Board plans to launch a new marketing initiative, which will include foray into new markets such as Iran, Pakistan, Vietnam and Egypt. It also plans to renew its efforts in traditional markets like Russia, the UK, Iraq and UAE. Noteworthy is its intent to double tea exports to Pakistan within a year. Assam Orthodox Tea is set to receive the geographical indications, GI, exclusivity. A GI stamp identifies a certain product as emanating from the territory of a WTO member or region or locality in that territory, where a given quality, reputation or other characteristic of the good is essentially attributable to its geographic origin. The Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs set up the Special Purpose Tea Fund SPTF, under the Tea Board on December 29, 2006. The aim is to fund replantation and rejuvenation R &R, program. In the same year, Tata Tea entered into an agreement to take over Jemka, which controls a 26% market share in the Czech Republic. The CCEA gave its approval for pegging the subsidy at 25% and adoption of a funding pattern of 25% promoter's contribution, 25% subsidy from the government and 50% loan from the SPTF. Banks have also been instructed to increase the lending period to over 13 years. Beginning in 2013, the Union Ministry of Commerce and Industry has been actively promoting the sale of tea in the country's top five export markets for that product, Egypt, Iran, Kazakhstan, Russia, and the United States. Demand for a separate time zone Tea gardens in Assam do not follow the Indian Standard Time, East, which is the time observed throughout India and Sri Lanka. The local time in Assam's tea gardens, known as tea garden time, or bagan time, is an hour ahead of the east. The system was introduced during British days keeping in mind the early sunrise in this part of the country. By and large, the system has subsequently been successful in increasing the productivity of tea garden workers as they save on daylight by finishing the work during daytime, and vice versa. Working time for tea laborers in the gardens is generally between 9 a.m. east 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. east 4 p.m. It may vary slightly from garden to garden. Noted filmmaker Janu Barua has been campaigning for a separate time zone for the northeast region. In popular culture Sagina Mahato, a 1970 Bengali film, directed by Tapan Sinha, deal with labor rights in the tea plantations in the Northeast during the British Raj. Paradisi, 2013 film, English, Vagabond, is a 2013 Indian Tamil drama film written and directed by Bala. The film is based on real-life incidents that took place before independence in the 1930s especially in southern tea estates. See also Indian tea culture Takalai Experimental Station Indian Tea Association References, <references>